Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Shikara Soccer Talk with Colin. Excited to talk about some recent news for the Red Stars and the Fire. We've had free agent moves, draft picks, and head coach signings. So let's discuss that here on the YouTube channel. This definitely be the last episode of 2023 before we move into the new year. And first, we'll start out with some Red Stars news. The main news is that the Red Stars have officially signed their new head coach for the upcoming 2024 season. Chris Perticelli, after he was fired, there was a hole in the Red Stars head coaching ranks because the Red Stars now have a new owner, Gloria Ricketts, new general manager who was hired a few weeks ago. Now they have a new head coach, completely new for an office. The team wants to rebrand with new players and get a new Aspen culture into the club. So the new head coach is named Lorne Donaldson. He's best known as the head coach, the manager of the Jamaican national women's team. He took them to the round of 16 in the most recent Women's World Cup. And the Jamaican team is low on funds. They don't have the most talent, but he was able to put his success in the defensive realm and leadership and bring that club to the round of 16 before they were eliminated. So that was very successful in getting the Jamaican team to the round of 16. He's also had vast experience in developing players, for example, in Colorado, such as Mallory Pugh, now Swanson, helping develop them and other players as well in the youth leagues and abroad as well. One of the positives of that is he's had success in the national level, success in developing players. So those are two important realms I look at. Some of the potential issues or drawbacks I see in this hiring is that overall I think he could be a good hiring. But some of the issues is that he's not coached really at all on the club level. And coaching as a national team the coach is far different than a club level coach because the schedule season is far different. You play a few matches here and there when you're a national coach, but in a club level coach, you can play up to 30 matches. For example, you have a new players come in and out, helping develop players on the pitch, change lineup cards, deal with different issues in the locker room, work with coaches, navigating the schedule, coming up with new statistics, new game plans as well. So a lot more goes into it as a coach of a club team than compared to the national team. So that's one issue. Two, since he doesn't have experience with the MLS or a women's NWSL or abroad, that's one potential issue I mentioned. And hopefully he navigates the NWSL well and is integrated well into the Red Stars as a whole, I'm not going to give any negative or glowing review of the hiring yet. I want to say neutral because I was just unsure if he'll immediately fit in while navigating women's soccer compared to national club. But his resume looks pretty solid. And what articles have mentioned, they believe it's good hiring based on his experience. So, so far, I'll say neutral. So that's the hiring of Lauren Donaldson, new Red Stars head coach. Other last news we have is that the Red Stars have free agents. They also were involved in the expansion draft, Bay Area FC and Utah Royals, the new intercreation, made their picks. No Red Stars players who were available to be drafted in the expansion draft were chosen, so we didn't lose any players, which is positive. And the other news is that the Red Stars have free free agents. There's a number of free agents available who they could resign. Casey Kruger, she was a potential one, but she officially most likely is leaving the club forever. Casey Kruger, she's talented veteran. She's towards the end of her career, not yet. She still has a number of years to go, but she's getting towards the middle to end. She's been successful on the Red Stars since 2016 when she signed. She's been in the club a long time. She's had her ups and downs. 
mainly due to injury. That's one of the big issues that has plagued her career. When she's been on the pitch, she's had her successes, helped the club defensively, solid defender. And I think Casey Cougar probably will be missed as a fan and as clubhouse presidents in the back line as well. She most likely, it's not been officially announced as of today, but she should be taking her talents to the Washington Spirit to sign there, which is a good move. They're a talented roster with some veterans, some young players they've drafted and signed as well. It's probably a good idea for her to get a brand new start because the Red Stars aren't going anywhere. And if she wants to compete for a playoff spot or just reinvent herself and start anew, that's a good idea. Next move is Taryn Davidson, who also has been a Red Stars a number of years. Just like Kruger, they've both been on the women's national team a long time. They both have talent as defenders. Davidson has also been plagued by injury, just like Kruger. And she's a veteran as well. It sounds like she probably will not be coming back to Red Stars, which as a fan of probably thinks a good idea. Because both of them are talented defenders, but this Red Stars team is going nowhere. And they're trying to rebuild with new young players for the draft, free agency, and developing from our leagues as well. So Davidson and Kruger with potentially high contracts don't really fit the timeline for this club. And both, of course, want to compete for playoff spots, winning the championship, which is not in the Red Stars timeline right now. So she most likely is leaving. There's rumors she's going to Gotham FC, the defending champs, which definitely if she wants a ring, that's a good idea to go to Gotham instead of the Red Stars. Then another free agent potential who might be leaving is Mallory Sonson. That one's potentially more likely she could stay. A, she's younger than both Kruger and Davidson. Another reason is her husband, Danzy Swanson just signed a brand new contract last season with the Cubs for seven years. So is it likely that she'll immediately leave Chicago, even though her husband's on the Cubs now, he's living here? We'll see. And she's definitely a key piece of the club, one of the best offensive strikers in the league. Strong player, has a ton of potential still, still very young. Of the three, that's the one I most likely want to stay. I don't want her to leave. Hopefully she resigns. It honestly just depends on the Red Stars with the new general manager, new head coach. Do they want to spend the money required to keep her? Or are they hoping she'll leave and they'll be able to sign someone from the scrap heap for a couple bucks? We'll see what occurs. I hope she stays. So that's it for the Red Stars, just the Lauren Donson hiring. Talked about the new general manager was hired a couple weeks back. And then free agent moves, seeing Kruger will be leaving, Davidson most likely will be leaving now. Mallory Swanson up in there, will she resign? So now moving to the Chicago Fire. They've made some moves as of late. The new head coach was, well, not really new. He's already been the head coach like 10 times. I think he's just like, his resume says, most likely would be coming Chicago Fire head coach again. Like when you have your resume and you post what jobs you've had in the past, your current job, he'll have like, for example, Chicago Fire head coach 2013 to 15, Chicago Fire head coach 2019 to 20, Chicago Fire head coach 2023 to 24. Like he just has to reuse it every time when he's looking for a new job. So that's Frank Klopas has been renamed head coach. He was the interim manager after our head coach was fired. So now he's the new manager again. And Frank Klopas is a decent manager. He's not like sensational or not fantastic, but he's solid as an interim. Now he's getting our opportunities, the main man in charge. We'll see what he can do with this roster. This roster has younger young players. Then the stars, like Jiren Shakiri and other ones as well. We'll see what he can do. Hopefully the team can improve. Last year was a disappointment yet again. We have not made the playoffs in forever, but hopefully he can build some cohesion, drop some stronger lineups, 
and work better with his roster. That's a lot of the players are international players that have been brought from abroad. Hopefully can fix some things and get this team actually competitive, not barely sneaking in like the last spot or in the basement dwellers with the crap teams. Hopefully can get it semi-improved. He's been fine as a caretaker manager before. Now he's the main manager. So let's see what happens. Other moves. There was the recent super draft where the Chicago Fire drafted five players to join the team. I'm not really going to go into depth on them because I don't know a lot about them yet. I haven't done extensive research on their club careers. One of the ones I know was from Notre Dame. He's a goalkeeper. He was signed for the draft. So we'll see if he can be built, trained, and potentially become the new goalkeeper for the Fire in the future. We still have young goalkeepers. So the timeline doesn't need to be accelerated for this new player from Notre Dame to take over, but just having a talented, potentially, goalkeeper in the wings is important for any soccer club. And there's some other players as well as strikers, defenders that we've drafted. So that's good as well. Hopefully some of them could pan out in the future. Then another move is that longtime Chicago Fire player Miguel Navarro is gone forever. Miguel Navarro has been on the roster for a while. I've had my qualms up and downs with him. Sometimes his skill is apparent on the pitch. Sometimes he looks like he belongs in the lower levels. Stinky, poor play, inconsistent. But overall, I think he was solid. He was fine. Like if you gave me a great rating, I'd say C plus, B minus. He was fine. But it'd be weird to see him off the pitch on the team now. He's gone. So no more Novell Navarro. Good luck in his future endeavors. Also, Kai Kamara, who signed for one season, half a season, the legendary MLS goal scorer. He also was not re-signed, which made sense. He's towards the twilight of his career. He didn't want to go to a team or sign up a team, but basement dweller. He wants to win a ring again, maybe. So he's gone. Made sense. Some other players have been cut as well, not re-signed, which made sense. But those are probably the biggest two, Miguel Navarro and Kai Kamara gone. Some of the other lower level ones were sent out packing as well. So that's all I have for this week. Chicago Fire News and Red Stars. Some moves for the draft, moves for signings as well. And we'll see what happens. Thank you for listening to and watching this week's episode of Chicago Soccer Talk. See you next time. Have a good week.